Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today we're going to talk about the enlisted galley. With up to 2,000 sailors on board, the vast majority of them being enlisted, the enlisted galley is the largest of the various galley spaces on the ship. It's located on second deck, right around the turret three barbette, just forward of the mess decks. During mess hours, the crew would come down the ladders or down the passageways on this end of the ship from the various second deck berthing spaces and offices, and they would come this way. It's worth noting that there are two chow lines, one on the starboard side and then this one on the port side, and uh, the, the setup is more or less identical, so we're just going to go through this port side chow line. As you come through, you grab a tray off the rack. The more trays that are on there, the more the rack depresses. So as you grab trays, this comes up and brings the trays up higher. As you're going, you then also grab your silverware. From here, they would be in those like metal cups that go in. And so now you've got your gear. <laughs> Notice the sign, mess deck gear is not to leave the mess deck area, i.e. turn this stuff in when you're done. Don't pocket it and go for whatever snacks you bought in port and keep in your locker. Coming back here, we come to the serving line. The serving line is still used intermittently on the ship today, which is why you see things like the pretzel machine and the hot dog roller. Those are not original. In fact, the original sneeze guard has been removed for this stuff. But you would come down, you'd take what you like, or rather you would say, indicate what you like, and they would serve it to you. Notice you've got the item, the portion, the calories, think thin portions, and then who it was prepared by. And you would come down here and then you got drink machines, ice cream machines, everything else as you go that way uh, onto the mess decks. During World War II, when the crew was significantly larger, you would even have fixed seating and mess deck benches in this area around the chow serving line and going back out. But by the 80s, you just have fixed seating back there. Let's go into the galley. Interestingly, one of our requirements in the Navy contract is that you do not reactivate the galley equipment. This is really weird. Uh, this, this is the one that has, and it's obvious they don't want us to reactivate the engines. Those pieces uh, were covered in preservative greases like cosmoline when the ship was mothballed. If we start messing with them and remove that, then they will start to deteriorate and might be wasted away by the time the Navy might need to reactivate the ship in national emergency. The galley equipment is not mothballed like that. So as we go through here, we're going to talk about a couple of reasons why they might not have wanted this stuff reactivated. So first up, we've got a bank of steam kettles here. These are jacketed kettles. You would have your soup or whatever on the inside, and then you've got pipes coming into this outside jacket that would bring hot steam in. And that's how you're heating these huge portions. And notice the paddle you would use to stir your soup in these massive quantities or to row a life raft if needed. And that's not a ladle. This is a ladle. So, one reason why we can't reactivate the galley may be the fact that this uses steam produced by the ship's boilers. Uh, and obviously, if we reactivate the boilers, we're reactivating part of the engineering plant, and that's a big no-no. Uh, the Navy doesn't want us running high-pressure steam through the ship anymore, uh, or even lower-pressure stuff like what would feed the galley equipment. So that's one reason why we can't use this. Coming in, uh, we have a range. We would like fry up burgers or steaks, those sorts of things, where you can cook that right in front of the sailor pretty quickly. Uh, and you've got the steam warming trays where your various 
other dishes would be your vegetables, your casseroles, other things. Maybe you've pre-made a bunch of burgers over there and you just put them in the tray here ready to go. In addition to the warming trays, we've got these big banks of ovens. Notice uh, they're all stickered inactive when the ship was decommissioned. These uh, are pretty high powered uh, electric oven ranges. So the fuses for most of these have been pulled. Like we, we don't wanna be running that kind of electricity through this space. I notice just bank after bank of these things. Uh, these all appear to be 1980s era equipment. Uh, so it does seem like when the ship is reactivated in the 80s or possibly subsequently during one of her major 80s yard periods, they go through and change out a lot of the galley equipment in here with modern, or at least modern to the 1980s equipment. Notice that this one is actually stickered activated. That may indicate that uh, as the ship is being decommissioned, more and more of the crew is removed. Uh, however, they still try to keep some amount of galley functions operating so that the crew can eat on board. They don't have to live on the ship, leave the ship to go to a base mass and then come back and they're losing that time that they would be using to activate the ship. Now, continuing around the space, you will see a pair of deep sinks here. This was common in the 1980s to have two and then there's a third one over there uh, to have three sinks in a galley. This does not meet modern food service codes uh, where you would also have a separate hand washing station. And so that might be another reason why uh, these galleys are not allowed to be opened because we don't have up-to-date uh, standards and we have to alter the artifacts significantly to install things like that. Uh, so these sinks are for filling stuff with water, cleaning stuff out, although there are sculleries for doing a lot of the heavy duty cleaning. We've got these banks of deep fat fryers. And this may be yet another reason why we're not allowed to reactivate these spaces. It's not unknown for ships to have galley fires. And usually the cause of this is the boiling oil in the deep fat fryers. If the ship sloshes too much, that comes out. Common fast food uh, involves deep fat frying. So if we were gonna reactivate the space, we would most likely be serving French fries, things like that, that go into a deep fat fryer, which then creates a fire hazard in this space. Uh, so that may be another reason why we're not allowed to activate it. Coming over here, uh, on the port side, you see a similar arrangement to the starboard side serving line. Earlier in the ship's career, both serving lines would be doing the same thing. But by the 1980s, it seems like one side was used to prepare the meal of the day. The other side was used to prepare fast food. So like burgers, uh, hot dogs, pizza, things like that. So if you don't like the meal of the day, and I've never heard of any sailor who liked the ginger pot roast. Then you come over to this side and uh, just get a burger. Now you've had a burger every day this week uh, and tonight is steak night. Well, you wanna go over to that side and, and get the uh, T-bone. So also in the galley, you have refrigerators. The ship has huge freezers and refrigerators below decks, but they're not particularly easy to go to back and forth. So you would go and draw this meal's food out of it, and it might need to go in the fridge while you're waiting for it. You might be preparing something like, I don't know, Jell-O, uh, where after you've made it, it then has to sit in the refrigerator for a while. So we've got fridges like that. We've got racks for holding the pans. And of course, uh, some more Freezers, this is the common type that you see in the uh, mess deck areas around the ship. Notice that even a critical space like the galley, you have to have food on the ship. It is built around the turret three bar bat. It's just wedged in where they have room for it. And more freezers, another uh, range. And so you can see just about everything in here exists in triplicate. We've got five of these big steam kettles plus a small one. 
We've got three different sinks. We've got three different ranges. We've got nine ovens. We've got four uh, deep fat fryers. There's just a massive amount of stuff in here, which is necessary for feeding a 2000 man crew. So if you would like to eat food served out of the galley, you can do that during our encampment programs where our caterers bring food on. Again, we're not allowed to prepare the food here, but they prepare it offsite, bring it on board, and then we serve it from the chow line, just like the crew would have received it. There's a link down below to the website for if you would like to sign up for an overnight. They start in September and run uh, through the end of the spring. Feel free to sign up for one of those. Our normal overnights require you to have a child in your group. If you would like to participate in an adults only overnight, there is one that's going to be on October 15th, and there's a link down below to that one specifically if you would like to sign up for that one without all the scout troops and school groups and everything else being here. Have you ever spent the night on the ship? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support you guys have given the museum over the years. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue supporting us. You can also support the museum by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and the channel. Thanks for watching.